Who needs the space elevator? We've got a rocket car. Welcome to part two of my Pulse Golf testing series. In this video, we are going to test the limit of how far we can physically launch these vehicles. So unlike the previous video, we are going to change up the way that we launch the vehicle. So before we put all the Pulse Nobilisks on the ground to launch the vehicles, that way it was consistent across all the vehicles. Now we're going to change things up by putting the Nobilisks on the back of the vehicle itself. And this way we can add as many Nobilisks as we want. And since they detonate in series and they stick to the vehicle, it almost works like a rocket thruster, continuing to push the vehicle up and away as it launches off. So first we're going to test it with the usual three and see how that compares to our previous test. Compared to our previous test where we put three Nobilisks on the ground, uh, putting one on the ground and two on the back of the vehicle yields about the same average distance as before. So now let's start adding more Nobilisks and see what happens. For test two, we are going to do four total. So that's three on the back, one on the ground. Uh, and like I said in the previous video, we need one on the ground because that helps launch the vehicle up, whereas the other three will push it forward. So let's do four. And you can immediately see the arc is a lot higher and the vehicle looks like it's going to travel a lot further. However, it has frozen in mid-air. So I ran into this problem in some pre-testing. Uh, because once the vehicle gets further enough away from the player, the game just stops rendering physics for the vehicle. And now this is coded into the game so that you get better performance and you don't have all the automated vehicles traveling around the map bumping into stuff and bogging down your game. Unfortunately for our golf game, that means that a vehicle reaches that physics wall and it just stops. However, the fun thing is that if we run toward the vehicle, physics will resume once we get close enough and it just drops out of the sky. Unfortunately, when it hits that physics wall, it stops and drops straight down. So it doesn't even continue an arc. And it looks like that physics rendering wall is about 200 meters away from the player, give or take. So there's two fixes to this. Fix one is to stand halfway down the course and then launch. This means that the vehicle will always be within that 200 meter loading distance and then it can travel a lot further. The one problem with standing down range though is that if you go past the 200 meter physics rendering boundary and you launch off the Nobilisks, it's not going to render the physics of the vehicle sitting on the T and you're not going to get the full launch. But I have another fix which we're going to test. Fix number two is to find yourself a willing volunteer, in this case it's my wife's account, and have them hop into the vehicle. This way there is always a player within physics rendering range of the vehicle. So now we can launch and we can go test the limit. Hmm. Although there might be a small caveat to this fix. So the one issue with this fix right now is now that there's a player in it, the vehicle is technically running. So it landed way over there and just slowly rolled over here. So I'm going to have to wait on the space bar to engage the brake, and we're going to do this test again. So with four Nobilisks, we were able to propel our vehicle 312 meters. That far outpaces uh, using just three Nobilisks, uh, which was 138 meters for this test 
and 143 meters for the previous test. Here's five. Six. And we might just go past the edge. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's past the edge of the driving range. So six Nobelisks did very much indeed go past the edge of the driving range. And I've had to extend it out just a little bit. Um, but for six, our test turned out to be 552 meters. Seven. That really went up. Uh, but did it go further enough? And we've frozen in mid-air. So sometimes this happens where a vehicle will just freeze in mid-air. Um, the player's still in there, so the physical rendering barrier isn't an issue right now. But, in some pre-testing, I did run into the issue where vehicles just seem to sometimes freeze mid-air when you start using seven or more, you know, a large amount of Nobelisks. And all I can equate this to is a bug. But we might be just hitting the limit of possibility. You know, in theory, we could add so many that we could launch this thing out of the map. But for some reason, it just freezes. And it's not like a height thing, because you can see uh, this one. Let me hide this. Uh, this one right here is so much higher than all the rest. But sometimes they just freeze. And there's no easy way to get them down. Well, actually, I don't, other than disassembling, there is no way to get them down. Because you can climb on top of them, jump on them, blow them up. And it just doesn't do anything. Oh, and to uh, add to it... Um, where... Oh, yep, yep, here we go. Uh, yeah, for some reason... The other player's invisible. So just for the heck of it, I bumped it up to eight Nobelisks, and I promise you there is another player in that tractor. Looks like we went a lot of up. And are we going to keep going? Oh, stuck again. I wonder if it's hang time. I'm going to test 6 again. I'm going to test 6 a couple times just to see if it's reliable and see if 7 is our boundary of what's possible. Looks like we have another successful six Nobelisk launch, which has traveled a total of 696 meters. I think that one's going to freeze. Yep, yeah, there we go. It's frozen. So my current theory is that if a vehicle spends enough time in the air and the arc is high enough, then it will get stuck. But if it kind of flies a little quicker, it's not in the air as long, and it flies lower, then it can actually complete its arc. This is also once you start getting into six, seven, eight Nobelisks. Um, I haven't had a problem with five. I've done multiple tests with six, and it freezes about half the time. A lot more testing needs to be done, though, to determine what the best number of Noblesks to use for a long-range golf course are. Because we can't have these vehicles freezing in midair if we're going to do a team-based version of the game, where one teammate launches the vehicle and the other one rides in it. 
So we'll have to come back to this test at a later date. But for now, my focus is getting the regular sized golf course together, the one that you play with three Nobelisks and you can play solo. Let's end this video with a bang. I've strapped 15 Nobelisks to the back of this tractor just to see where it goes and what the heck happens. Oh god. Straight up. Straight up into the sky. Has it frozen? Is it still moving? I think it's still moving. Is it coming back down? I'm not 100% sure. I see things in the, in the background. You can like sort of make out shapes. The speed over there is listed at 14 kilometers an hour. I think it has finally frozen. But watching the speed, it went down to zero and then back up to 14. And now it's just stuck at 14. Uh, so... Let's give it one more go. I've strapped uh, another 10 to the back of this tractor. Uh, they're a little higher up just to see if that affects the trajectory at all. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. Nope, we went straight up again. And froze almost immediately. And a player crate did... Oh, I see. I killed the other player. <laughs> and it started to rain. And now the game weeps because I've inadvertently given my wife a Viking funeral without even the option to revive her. Um, so we've learned a lot, and we've certainly learned that this game is quite buggy when we push it to the limit. And if we really load up vehicles with Nobilis, we can get them to go really far. But there's a limit, and if you overload it, then they just go straight up into the sky and turn into rocket ships. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to move on to building the course and doing a couple other building videos. Uh, and somewhere down the line, come back to see you know, how reliable five Nobelisks are, if six gets any more reliable, if bugs get patched. Um, but like I said earlier, for now, we're focusing on getting the regular sized course done and getting it playable and hopefully making it available for download. Thanks for watching.